The U.S. says Israel has agreed to a daily four-hour humanitarian pause in war-ravaged Gaza, but maintains a ceasefire is not on the horizon. Spanish far-right politician Alejo Vidal Cuadras has been taken to hospital after he was shot in the face. This comes amid rising tensions as the country tries to form government. Spain's Prime Minister Pedro Sánchez reaches an agreement on amnesty for Catalan separatists in return for their support to form a new government. At the beginning of November 2022, Kherson was recaptured by defending troops in the south of Ukraine. But one year on, it is still subjected to Russian airstrikes. On Thursday, at least one civilian died and three were injured after a residential building was hit in Ostrov on the west bank of the Dnipro River, north of Crimea. For residents like eight-year-old Anastasia, even the daily trip to school is dangerous. Many children have already left Kherson, benefiting from a protection program set up by the Ukrainian government. But not all families are coping with the separation. This woman says her youngest grandson was killed in a missile strike. He was six years old. On the 9th of November last year, Russian Defence Minister Sergei Shoigu announced the withdrawal of Russian forces from Kherson, one of the four regions the Kremlin unilaterally annexed the previous month. Two days later, Ukrainian forces entered the city and announced its liberation. Israeli forces are fighting Hamas militants in the north of the Gaza Strip, supporting the Institute for the Study of War's previous assessment that Hamas is waiting its main effort in the Gaza city rather than the northern Gaza Strip. The think tank adds this is consistent with Hamas' intent to fight, quote, a long war to force Israel into ceasefire. The ADF said in a statement that its soldiers took control of a Hamas military stronghold in northern Gaza while continuing the clearing operations in Beit Hanun in the northeast and operations around Al Shuti refugee camp here in this area. According to Reuters, Gaza residents said that Israeli troops are inching their way closer to Al Shifa Hospital, Gaza's biggest health facility, where Israel believes Hamas has a command center. Why? Far-right politician Alejo Vidal Cuadras has been shot amid tensions in Spain over negotiations for a left-wing government. The 78-year-old politician and former president of the Catalan Popular Party was shot in the face and taken to hospital in a conscious state. The emergency services reported he had a gunshot wound to the jaw area with an entry and exit hole. The alleged perpetrator, who was traveling on a motorbike and wearing a helmet, fled the scene. He's being tracked down by police. Vidal Cuadras is one of the founding members of the far-right party Vox, currently the third largest force in the lower house of Spanish parliament. After months of deadlock following Spain's elections, Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez is closer than ever to having a new government. It will come after long weeks of negotiations with former Catalan president Carles Puigdemont, who fled to Belgium in 2017 after an illegal independence referendum. The seven seats of Puigdemont's party are key for Sanchez's re-election. And on Thursday, an agreement was signed between the two parties in Brussels. We're in an inédita. An etapa que we need to saber explore and exploit. An etapa al recorregut de i ambició de la qual dependrà en gran part de nosaltres, de la capacitat que tinguem d'emprar les eines que hem acordat i en la qual no ens hem fixat cap altre límit que la, que la voluntat del poble de Catalunya. But the support of Puigdemont's Catalan separatist party is highly controversial. 
Sanchez's Socialist Party has agreed to approve an amnesty law for those related to the independence movement between 2012 and 2023 in exchange for their support. In particular, those who participated in the 2017 independence referendum and the protests after it. Un acuerdo que constituye una oportunidad histórica para resolver un conflicto que solo desde la política puede y debe resolverse. Solo desde la negociación deben resolverse los desencuentros. Un acuerdo entre dos formaciones que tenemos discrepancias profundas. The details of the amnesty law and its scope are still unknown, but it's already sparked violent protests in Spain, as well as some doubts in the European Commission. The European Commissioner for Justice, DDA Renders, sent a letter Wednesday to the government of Spain demanding more information on the agreement. At the beginning of November 2022, Kherson was recaptured by defending troops in the south of Ukraine. One year on, it is still subjected to Russian airstrikes. On Thursday, at least one civilian died and three were injured after a residential building was hit in Ostrov on the west bank of the Dnipro River, north of Crimea. For residents like eight-year-old Anastasia, even the daily trip to school is dangerous. Many children have already left Kherson, benefiting from a protection program set up by the Ukrainian government. But not all families are coping with the separation. This woman says her youngest grandson was killed in a missile strike. He was six years old. On the 9th of November last year, Russian Defence Minister Sergei Shoigu announced the withdrawal of Russian forces from Kherson, one of the four regions the Kremlin unilaterally annexed the previous month. Two days later, Ukrainian forces entered the city and announced its liberation. More than 20,000 Ukrainian truck drivers are stuck at the Polish border. Polish truckers have been blocking the border since the beginning of the week, saying they are losing business opportunities since the EU waived a system of permits for Ukrainian transport companies to enter the bloc. Polish companies say the move has caused an influx of Ukrainian competitors in the area. <laughs> Protesters say the government is not proposing anything to solve the ongoing dispute and organizers have indicated they will be able to continue their action until at least the end of the year. Local Polish police said the waiting time to cross the border is around 160 hours, but Ukrainian truckers say they are running out of food and water. So we have to continue to work... As governments throughout the world race to regulate artificial intelligence, focus on international cooperation, particularly with China, is intensifying. It was a key topic at Euronews' International AI Summit in Brussels this week, with many people saying it could prove difficult to cooperate with Beijing on AI standards. I think it's fair to say that the geopolitical reality is not very conducive to deep, meaningful cooperation. There is a, a very uh, much escalating tech war between the US and China. There's tremendous race for technological supremacy. There's concern who is the economic power, the technological power, the geopolitical power. And there's also vast ideological differences. So it is hard to see the US and the EU to agree with China in particularly meaningful substantive rules around AI. The explosion of interest in artificial intelligence could not have come at a more awkward time, given the global effort needed to work together on setting safety standards. 
that there is some hope amid all the geopolitical tension. Last week saw the historic Bletchley Declaration in the UK where the US and China both signed an agreement on AI safety. There's also optimism in the business-to-business -business area. I'm very optimistic when it comes to um, what can be done between companies, between engineers. Uh, Chinese companies are already playing a really active role. As long as these conversations can continue and even maybe be facilitated by governments, despite the geopolitical tensions, um, I think there will be progress going forward. But for the MEP leading the charge on the EU's AI Act, cooperation with China on the technology should for now be secondary. First, the collective West needs to get its own house in order. Because it is the same when addressing governance at a global stage, when addressing standards at a global stage, there is an inevitable dialogue with China. But what I've always said is that first and foremost, we have to make sure that we are first aligned. Us, the democracies that understand technology in the same way and its role in society, we have to first get ourselves as convergent as we can, as aligned as we can, and then have a proper conversation with China to make sure that we can address as many as the other, let's say, bigger risks, including geopolitical risks, in a, in a framework that also includes that. Next week could see another historic moment in the West cooperation with Beijing. U.S. President Joe Biden will likely meet with Chinese leader Xi Jinping, which could lay the groundwork for future cooperation on artificial intelligence. Chris Lepich's Euronews, Brussels.